What do you think is the key to achieving our goals, our success? Some people suggest things like hard work, focus, persistence. But research shows these are all byproducts of something else, something much more powerful that we can all develop. Some people see intelligence or abilities as fixed, what is called a fixed mindset, while other people see them, as Josh does, as qualities that can be developed, a growth mindset. More important, Dr. Dweck discovered that these two different mindsets lead to very different behaviors and results. In a study she did with Dr. Lisa Blackwell, several hundred seventh graders were surveyed to determine which mindset each student had, and then they were tracked for two years. Results showed that the students with a growth mindset, those who thought they could change their own intelligence, increased their grades over time, while those with a fixed mindset did not. You can see the trend. The gap in performance just widens and widens over time. The difference between these two groups? A different perspective on intelligence. Other studies have shown similar effects for our mindset about other abilities, like problem solving, playing sports, managing people, or anything else you'd like. Dancing la Macarena. <laughs> the key to success is not simply effort or focus or resilience, but it is the growth mindset that creates them. The mindset itself is critical. Research shows that when we directly try to build grit or persistence, it is not nearly as effective as addressing the mindset that underlies them. How many of us think of ourselves as not math people, or creative, or sociable, or athletic, or conversely, that we're naturals? If we're to fulfill our potential, we have to start thinking differently. We have to realize that our, we're not chained to our current capabilities. Neuroscience shows that the brain is very malleable, and we can change our own ability to think and to perform. In fact, many of the most accomplished people of our era were thought of by experts to have no future. People like Charles Darwin, Lucille Ball, Marcel Proust, and many others. But they, along with all great achievers, from Mozart to Einstein, built their abilities. But the key insight that I would like you to walk away with today is that when we realize that, when we realize that we can change our own abilities, when we have a growth mindset, we bring our game to new levels. So how does a growth mindset do that? It turns out that there are physiological manifestations to mindset. Brain scans show that for people with a fixed mindset, the brain becomes most active when receiving information about how the person performed, such as a grade or a score. But for people with a growth mindset, the brain becomes most active when receiving information about what they could do better next time. In other words, people with a fixed mindset worry the most about how they're judged, while those with a growth mindset focus the most on learning. There are other consequences of mindset. People with a fixed mindset see effort as a bad thing, something that only people with low capabilities need, while those with a growth mindset see effort as what makes us smart, as the way to grow. And when they hit a setback or failure, people with a fixed mindset tend to conclude that they're incapable. So to protect their ego, they lose interest or withdraw. We observe that as lack of motivation, but behind it is a fixed mindset. Whereas people with a growth mindset understand that setbacks are part of growth. So when they hit one, they find a way around it, like Josh Waitzkin did when he lost in chess or in martial arts. Research clearly shows these effects of mindset. In one study that Dr. Dweck did with Dr. Claudia Mueller, they had children do a set of puzzles. And then they praised the kids. To some of the kids, they said, wow, that's a really good score. You must be smart at this. That's fixed mindset praise because it portrays intelligence or abilities as a fixed quality. To other kids, they said, wow, that's a really good score. You must have tried really hard. That's growth mindset praise, because it focuses on the process. Then they ask the kids, OK, what kind of puzzle would you like to do next, an easy one or a hard one? The majority of the kids who received the fixed mindset praise chose to do the easy puzzle, while the great majority of those who received the growth mindset praise chose to challenge themselves. Then, all the, re then the researchers gave a hard puzzle to all of the kids, because they were interested in seeing what confronting difficulty would do to their performance. Look at what happened when the kids later went back to the set of easier problems that they started with. The kids who received the fixed mindset praise did significantly worse than they had originally, while those who received the growth mindset praise did better. 
And to top it off, at the very end, kids were asked to report their scores. And the kids who received the, grow, the fixed mindset praise lied about their scores over three times more often than those who received the growth mindset praise. They did not have another way to cope with their failure. The difference between these two groups? One short little sentence. These studies show not only the mechanisms by which mindset affects performance, but they also show something else that's very important. They show that we can change mindsets. And that's important because most of us have fixed mindsets about something. Well, when you look at children and you look at all the different theories about what makes successful kids, you realize that almost all the theories are wrong because they haven't been verified. Like, for example, high IQ. You have a lot of high IQ people who become marginal members of society. And so what is the one psychological test that correlates with success in life? And I found out that it's the marshmallow test. It's the test that has survived every challenge. You track students for 30 years, for 30 years in different countries, and you find that they are more successful, they have a lower divorce rate, higher income, higher status in society. So what is this marshmallow test? You get kids and ask them, do you want a marshmallow now or two marshmallows a few hours from now? And the kids that want the marshmallow now tend to be those that want shortcuts, those that don't want to do the hard work. They want the, the, the quick kill. They grab that marshmallow. But the other ones say, no, wait a minute. If I wait two hours, I can get two marshmallows. I can hold out. There's a pot of gold waiting for me. They're not going to take the shortcut. And so you say to yourself, well, that's a test for kids. But then you track them decade by decade by decade. And then you find out, oh my God, these are the ones who go to college, the ones who hold out for that advanced degree that don't want that simple payoff now, but are gonna delay gratification into the future. And so I realized that that's the key to success in life, not just science, but in life. Don't take the shortcuts. Uh -huh.